What's next? Discover over 50 future events that will happen between now and the second coming of Christ. Chronologically arranged by Glenn Walker. The Counterfeit Revival. The Counterfeit Revival, July 16, 2016. God's True Revival follows later. Pope Francis will address a million Americans at the National Mall in Washington, D.C., 7-16-16. Nick Hall is calling for a million Americans to gather at the National Mall to come together around Jesus with Pope Francis to address Americans with more than 40 well-known musicians, authors, pastors, and speakers. Satan deceives the whole world. Revelation 12:9. Papists, Protestants, and worldlings will alike accept the form of godliness without the power, and they will see in this union a grand movement for the conversion of the world and the ushering in of a long-expected millennium. Maranatha, page 190. Prophecy foretold that the counterfeit revival would come first. Notwithstanding the widespread declension of faith and piety, there are true followers of Christ in these churches. Before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. The Spirit and power of God will be poured out upon His children, at that time, many will separate themselves from those churches in which the love of this world has supplanted love for God and His Word. The enemy of souls desires to hinder this work, and before the time for such a movement shall come, he will endeavor to prevent it by introducing a counterfeit. The Great Controversy, page 464. Multitudes will exult that God is working marvelously for them when the work is that of another spirit. Under a religious guise, Satan will seek to extend his influence over the Christian world. The Great Controversy, page 464. At every large gathering, some of our ministers should be in attendance. They should work wisely to obtain a hearing and to get the light of the truth before as many as possible. Evangelism, page 35. At all such gatherings there should be present men whom God can use. Leaflets containing the light of present truth should be scattered among the people like the leaves of autumn. To many who attend these gatherings these leaflets would be as the leaves of the tree of life, which are for the healing of the nations. Evangelism, page 36 www.glowonline.org Glow tracks come with a couple of dozen different messages in 19 languages. Buy them for $5 a hundred and distribute them like the leaves of autumn. Future Events is part of a message that is going to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people with a loud voice. Revelation 14, 6 and 7 Read The Great Controversy in 37 Languages at the following website, www.prophecymadeeasy.com. Glenn Walker, PME International. E. G. White, the author of The Great Controversy, which is available worldwide in over 60 languages, is the most translated female nonfiction author in the history of literature, as well as the most translated American nonfiction author of either gender. In his last warning message, God reveals that Satan deceives the whole world, Revelation 12:9. Satan will deceive the majority of people living on planet Earth, causing them to reject God's last warning message of love. Please be a missionary and share this by forwarding this entire message to many people. You have over 50 future events in chronological order that most people would pay a fortune to know. And some do waste their money on psychics and fortune tellers that work for the devil to destroy those who frequent them. But here you will find from God's word the future of the world and how you can fit into that future. Warning! Do not read further if you do not wish to learn the truth about the future that will cause you, if you believe these prophecies, to make changes in your life. 
Do not read further if you do not want a deeper faith in God's leading in your life and a hunger to know more and a hunger to teach what you are learning to others. Chapter 34 Can Our Dead Speak to Us? Number 1. What Will Satan Counterfeit Perfectly? He has power to bring before men the appearance of their departed friends. The counterfeit is perfect. The familiar look, the words, the tone are reproduced with marvelous distinctness. Many are comforted with the assurance that their loved ones are enjoying the bliss of heaven. And without suspicion of danger, they give ear to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Great Controversy, page 552. Chapter 35, Liberty of Conscience Threatened. Number 2. What door are the Protestant churches opening? In the movements now in progress in the United States to secure for the institutions and usages of the church the support of the state, Protestants are following in the steps of Papists. Nay, more they are opening the door for the papacy to regain in Protestant America the supremacy which she has lost in the Old World. The Great Controversy, page 573. Number 3. What is Rome preparing to do? What will happen within the secret recesses of Rome's cathedrals? Rome is aiming to re-establish her power, to recover her lost supremacy. Let the principle once be established in the United States that the church may employ or control the power of the state, and the triumph of Rome in this country is assured. The Great Controversy, page 581. God's word has given warning of the impending danger. Let this be unheeded and the Protestant world will learn what the purposes of Rome really are, only when it is too late to escape the snare. She is silently growing into power. Her doctrines are exerting their influence in legislative halls, in the churches and in the hearts of men. She is piling up her lofty and massive structures in the secret recesses of which her former persecutions will be repeated. Stealthily and unsuspectedly she is strengthening her forces to further her own ends when the time shall come for her to strike. The Great Controversy, page 581. Number 4. What is the Lord going to do? The Lord will do just what he has declared that he would. Number 1. He will withdraw his blessings from the earth. And number 2. Remove his protecting care from those who are rebelling against his law and teaching and forcing others to do the same. The Great Controversy, page 589. Numbers added for clarity. Number 5. How will Satan disguise his character before Jesus returns? What will he actually do to large cities on planet Earth? While appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disaster until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. The Great Controversy, page 589. Number 6. Whom will Satan blame for causing the world's disasters? And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. It will be declared that number 1. Men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. Number two, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. And number three, that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. The Great Controversy, page 590. Number seven, what will religious teachers claim is the cause of the moral decay? Communications from the spirits will declare that God has sent them to convince the rejecters of Sunday of their error, affirming that the laws of the land should be obeyed as the law of God. They will lament the great wickedness in the world and second the testimony of religious teachers that the degraded state of morals is caused by the desecration of Sunday. Great will be the indignation excited against all who refuse to accept their testimony. The Great Controversy, page 590. Number 8. What is going to happen to those who honor the Bible Sabbath? 
Those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order, as breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth. The Great Controversy, page 592. As the Protestant churches reject the clear scriptural arguments in defense of God's law, they will long to silence those whose faith they cannot overthrow by the Bible. The Great Controversy, page 592. Number 9. What three methods will church and government leaders use to get everyone to honor Sunday? The dignitaries of church and state will unite to one, bribe, two, persuade, or three, compel all classes to honor the Sunday. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 12, 17. The Great Controversy, page 592. Number 10. What will happen to the half-hearted and the hypocrites in God's church when persecution strikes God's people? When the testing time shall come, those who have made God's word their rule of life will be revealed. Let opposition arise. Let bigotry and intolerance again bear sway. Let persecution be kindled. And the half-hearted and hypocritical will waver and yield the faith. But the true Christian will stand firm as a rock. His faith stronger, his hope brighter than in days of prosperity. The Great Controversy, page 602. I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Revelation 18, 1, 2, and 4. Number 11. What type of people will God use to declare his last warning message? What four things will they unmask? The laborers will be qualified rather by the unction of his spirit than by the training of literary institutions. Men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. 1. The sins of Babylon will be laid open. 2. The fearful results of enforcing the observances of the church by civil authority. 3. The inroads of spiritualism. 4. The stealthy but rapid progress of the papal power. All will be unmasked. By these solemn warnings, the people will be stirred. The Great Controversy, page 606. Number 12. How will the popular ministry react? But since many refuse to be satisfied with the mere authority of men and demand a plain, thus saith the Lord, the popular ministry, like the Pharisees of old, filled with anger as their authority is questioned, will denounce the message as of Satan and stir up the sin-loving multitudes to revile and persecute those who proclaim it. The Great Controversy, page 606. Number 13. What types of force and what types of advantages will the fallen churches and the governments use to get God's obedient children to renounce their faith? The church appeals to the strong arm of civil power, and in this work, Papists and Protestants unite. As the movement for Sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided, the law will be invoked against commandment keepers. They will be threatened with fines and imprisonment, and some will be offered positions of influence and other rewards and advantages as inducements to renounce their faith. But their steadfast answer is, Show us from the word of God our error. The same plea that was made by Luther under similar circumstances. Those who are arraigned before the courts make a strong vindication of the truth, and some who hear them are led to take their stand to keep all the commandments of God. 
Thus light will be brought before thousands who otherwise would know nothing of these truths. The Great Controversy, page 607. Number 14. What are three types of persecution that they will use against those who refuse to honor the Sunday Sabbath? All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 as the defenders of truth refuse to honor the Sunday Sabbath, one, some of them will be thrust into prison, two, some will be exiled, three, some will be treated as slaves. The Great Controversy, page 608. Number 15. What do a large number of Sabbath keepers choose to do when the test, the persecution, comes against Sabbath keepers? As the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. When the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy, popular side. The Great Controversy, 1888, page 608. Number 16. Whom does Satan use the most effectively to misrepresent Sabbath keepers in courtrooms across planet Earth? Men of talent and pleasing address who once rejoiced in the truth employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls. They become the most bitter enemies of their former brethren. When Sabbath keepers are brought before the courts to answer for their faith, these apostates are the most efficient agents of Satan to misrepresent and accuse them, and by false reports and insinuations to stir up the rulers against them. The Great Controversy, page 608. Number 17. What happens to those Sabbath keepers who remain faithful when the storm of opposition burst upon God's people? When the storm of opposition and reproach burst upon them, some, overwhelmed with consternation, would be ready to exclaim, Had we foreseen the consequences of our words, we would have held our peace. They are hedged in with difficulties. Satan assails them with fierce temptations. The work which they have undertaken seems far beyond their ability to accomplish. They are threatened with destruction. The Great Controversy, page 608. The same trials have been experienced by men of God in ages past. Wycliffe, Haas, Luther, Tyndale, Baxter, Wesley urged that all doctrines be brought to the test of the Bible and declared that they would renounce everything which it condemned. Who dare refuse to publish it? He commands his servants to present the last invitation of mercy to the world. They cannot remain silent except at the peril of their souls. Christ's ambassadors have nothing to do with consequences. They must perform their duty and leave results with God. The Great Controversy, page 609. Number 18. What does God do for his children as the trials continue? As the opposition rises to a fiercer height, the servants of God are again perplexed, for it seems to them that they have brought the crisis. But conscience and the word of God assure them that their course is right, and although the trials continue, they are strengthened to bear them. The Lord whom we serve is able to deliver us. Christ has conquered the powers of earth, and shall we be afraid of a world already conquered? The Great Controversy, page 610. Number 19a. How will God use those politicians who fear the Lord in this time? What decision will some of them make? But so long as Jesus remains man's intercessor in the sanctuary above, the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit is felt by rulers and people. Statesmen who fear the Lord are influenced by holy angels to oppose such propositions with unanswerable arguments. Thus a few men will hold in check a powerful current of evil. The opposition of the enemies of truth will be restrained that the third angel's message may do its work. When the final warning shall be given, it will arrest the attention of these leading men through whom the Lord is now working, and some of them will accept it, and will stand with the people of God through the time of trouble. The Great Controversy, page 610. Number 19b. What do God's people need in order to survive when the seven last plagues shall be poured out? 
At that time, the latter rain, or refreshing from the presence of the Lord, will come to give power to the loud voice of the third angel and prepare the saints to stand in the period when the seven last plagues shall be poured out. Early Writings, page 85. Number 20. When does God pour out the largest portion of His Holy Spirit? Does God pour out the largest portion of His Spirit before His church is persecuted, or after all the half-hearted and hypocrites have been shaken out? The work will be similar to that of the day of Pentecost, as the former rain was given in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the opening of the Gospel to cause the upspringing of the precious seed, so the latter rain will be given at its close for the ripening of the harvest. 2.23 In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2.17 and 21. The Great Controversy, page 611. The great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than marked its opening. The prophecies which were fulfilled in the outpouring of the former reign at the opening of the gospel are again to be fulfilled in the latter reign at its close. Acts 3:19 and 20. The Great Controversy, page 611. Please share. When God fills His people with His Holy Spirit, what will happen as they pray for thousands of sick people? Servants of God with their faces lighted up and shining with holy consecration will hasten from place to place to proclaim the message from heaven. By thousands of voices all over the earth, the warning will be given. Miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and signs and wonders will follow the believers. Satan also works with lying wonders, even bringing down fire from heaven in the sight of men. Revelation 13.13 13. Thus the inhabitants of the earth will be brought to take their stand. The Great Controversy, page 612. The message will be carried not so much by argument as by the deep conviction of the Spirit of God. The arguments have been presented, the seed has been sown, and now it will spring up and bear fruit. The publications distributed by missionary workers have exerted their influence. The Great Controversy, page 612. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Daniel 12, 1. Number 22. Why is the latter rain necessary? For what does it prepare God's people? When the third angel's message closes, mercy no longer pleads for the guilty. Inhabitants of the earth, the people of God have accomplished their work. They have received the latter rain the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and they are prepared for the trying hour before them. Angels are hastening to and fro in heaven. The Great Controversy, page 613, The Final Test. Number 23. What do those who pass the final test, those who prove themselves loyal to God and to God's law, receive at this time? An angel returning from the earth announces that his work is done. The final test has been brought upon the world, and all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts have received the seal of the living God. Then Jesus ceases his intercession in the sanctuary above. He lifts his hands and with a loud voice says, It is done. And all the angelic hosts lay off their crowns as he makes the solemn announcement. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Revelation 22, 11. Number 24. Jesus will now say, It is done. What decision has God made that is forever final? Every case has been decided for life or death. The Great Controversy, page 613. Number 25. Jesus will now say, It is done. 
How much protection will those who have rejected God's law have from Satan and his evil angels? When he leaves his sanctuary, in that fearful time the righteous must live in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. The restraint which has been upon the wicked is removed, and Satan has entire control of the finally impenitent. God's long-suffering has ended, the world has rejected his mercy, the wicked, unsheltered by divine grace, they have no protection from the wicked one. The Great Controversy, page 614. Number 26. What will Satan do to the people of the planet Earth at this time? What will Satan spread everywhere? Satan will then plunge the inhabitants of the Earth into one great final trouble. The whole world will be involved in ruin, more terrible than that which came upon Jerusalem of old. The Great Controversy, page 614. A single angel destroyed all the firstborn of the Egyptians and filled the land with mourning. When David offended against God by numbering the people, one angel caused that terrible destruction by which his sin was punished. The same destructive power exercised by holy angels when God commands will be exercised by evil angels when he permits. There are forces now ready and only waiting the divine permission to spread desolation everywhere. The Great Controversy, page 614. Those who honor the law of God have been accused of bringing judgments upon the world, and they will be regarded as the cause of the fearful convulsions of nature and the strife and bloodshed among men that are filling the earth with woe. The power attending the last warning has enraged the wicked. Their anger is kindled against all who have received the message, and Satan will excite to still greater intensity the spirit of hatred and persecution. The Great Controversy, page 614. Number 27. When God finishes his judgment, how many people will know that their destiny has already been forever decided in God's courtroom in heaven? When the irrevocable decision of the sanctuary has been pronounced and the destiny of the world has been forever fixed, the inhabitants of the earth will know it not. The forms of religion will be continued by a people from whom the Spirit of God has been finally withdrawn, and the satanic zeal with which the Prince of Evil will inspire them for the accomplishment of his malignant designs will bear the semblance of zeal for God. The Great Controversy, page 615. 28. What kind of a law will the governments of the world and the fallen churches pass against those who obey and serve God? As the Sabbath has become the special point of controversy throughout Christendom, and religious and secular authorities have combined to enforce the observance of the Sunday, the persistent refusal of a small minority to yield to the popular demand will make them objects of universal execration. A decree will finally be issued against those who hallow the Sabbath of the Fourth Commandment, giving the people liberty and after a certain time to put them to death. The Great Controversy, page 615. 29a. What does God call this time following the passage of this de death decree? The people of God will then be plunged into those scenes of affliction and distress described by the prophet at the time of Jacob's trouble. Thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. All faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 5 to verse 7. The Great Controversy, page 616. 29b. How was Jacob successful that night, and what does that teach us about how we can be successful? Jacob's night of anguish, when he wrestled in prayer for deliverance from the hand of Esau, Genesis 32, 24 to 30, represents the experience of God's people in the time of trouble. His only hope was in the mercy of God. His only defense must be prayer. Yet he leaves nothing undone on his own part to atone for the wrong to his brother and to avert the threatened danger. So should the followers of Christ, as they approach the time of trouble, make every exertion to place themselves in a proper light before the people, to disarm prejudice, and to avert the danger that which threatens liberty of conscience. The Great Controversy, page 616. 
29c. Satan hopes to rule supremely over everyone on planet Earth. What does he attempt to do against those who keep God's commandments and thus resist his supremacy? As Satan influenced Esau to march against Jacob, so he will stir up the wicked to destroy God's people in the time of trouble. The Great Controversy, page 618. Number 30. How hopeful are God's children at this time? As Satan accuses the people of God on account of their sins, the Lord permits him to try them to the uttermost. Their confidence in God, their faith and firmness will be severely tested. As they review the past, their hopes sink, for in their whole lives they can see little good. They are fully conscious of their weakness and unworthiness. Satan endeavors to terrify them with a the thought that their cases are hopeless that the stain of their defilement will never be washed away. He hopes so to destroy their faith that they will yield to his temptations and turn from their allegiance to God. The Great Controversy, page 618. Number 31. Of what are God's people afraid of at this time? Though God's people will be surrounded by enemies who are bent upon their destruction, yet the anguish which they suffer is not a dread of persecution for the truth's sake. They fear that every sin has not been repented of, and that through some fault in themselves they will fail to realize the fulfillment of the Savior's promise. I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. Revelation 3.10 If they could have the assurance of pardon, they would not shrink from torture or death. But should they prove unworthy and lose their lives because of their own defects of character, then God's holy name would be reproached. The Great Controversy, page 619. On every hand they hear the plottings of treason and see the active working of rebellion. The Great Controversy, page 619. 32. Why does Satan want us to delay preparing for the trouble ahead? All who endeavor to excuse or conceal their sins and permit them to remain upon the books of heaven, unconfessed and unforgiven, will be overcome by Satan. Those who delay a preparation for the day of God cannot attain it in the time of trouble or at any subsequent time. The case of all such is hopeless. The Great Controversy, page 620. Number 33. What will those professed Christians do who come up to the last fearful conflict unprepared? Those professed Christians who come up to that last fearful conflict unprepared will, in their despair, confess their sins in words of burning anguish, while the wicked exult over their distress. The Great Controversy, page 620. Number 34. Why does God permit this affliction to his people? God's love for his children during the period of their severest trial is as strong and tender as in the days of their sunniest prosperity. But it is needful for them to be placed in the furnace of fire. Their earthliness must be consumed, that the image of Christ may be perfectly reflected. The Great Controversy, page 621. Number 35a. What kind of faith will this time of distress and anguish require? What does Bible prophecy tell us is coming soon? How bad will it be? The season of distress and anguish before us will require a faith that can endure weariness, delay, and hunger, a faith that will not faint though severely tried. Cling with unyielding faith to the promises of God. The Great Controversy, page 621. The word persistent New King James Version added for clarity. Those who exercise but little faith now are in the greatest danger of falling under the power of satanic delusions and the decree to compel the conscience. The Great Controversy, page 622. The time of trouble, such as never was, is soon to open upon us, and we shall need an experience which we do not now possess in which many are too indolent to obtain. It is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality, but this is not true of the crisis before us. The most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the ordeal. 
In that time of trial, every soul must stand for himself before God. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in the land, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Ezekiel 14.20 The Great Controversy, page 622 Now, while our great high priest is making the atonement for us, we should seek to become perfect in Christ. He had kept his Father's commandments, and there was no sin in him that Satan could use to his advantage. This is the condition in which those must be found who shall stand in the time of trouble. The Great Controversy, page 623. 35b. Since we are weak, what does our Savior invite us to do? Our precious Savior invites us to join ourselves to Him, to unite our weakness to His strength, our ignorance to His wisdom, our unworthiness to His merits. The Great Controversy, page 623. Number 36. What strange supernatural UFO sights will we soon see in the skies overhead? Fearful sights of a supernatural character will soon be revealed in the heavens in token of the power of miracle working demons. The spirits of devils will go forth to the kings of the earth and to the whole world to fasten them in deception and urge them on to unite with Satan in his last struggle against the government of heaven. By these agencies, rulers and subjects will be alike deceived. The Great Controversy, page 624. Number 37. What is Satan's greatest act of deception that he will soon use to unite the people of planet Earth in rebellion against God? As the crowning act in the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personate Christ. In different parts of the Earth, Satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness, resembling the description of the Son of God given by John in the Revelation, Revelation 1, 13-15. The glory that surrounds him is unsurpassed by anything that mortal eyes have yet beheld. He claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday and commands all to hallow the day which he has blessed. He declares that those who persist in keeping holy the seventh day are blaspheming his name by refusing to listen to his angels sent to them with light and truth. The Great Controversy, page 624. Number 38a. Why will God's loyal people know that this supernatural being who claims to be Christ is really Satan, since he will look and talk like Christ? But the people of God will not be misled. The teachings of this false Christ are not in accordance with the scriptures. His blessing is pronounced upon the worshippers of the beast and his image, the very class upon whom the Bible declares that God's unmingled wrath shall be poured out. The Great Controversy, page 625. And furthermore, Satan is not permitted to counterfeit the manner of Christ's advent. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 24 to 27, 31. Chapter 25, verse 31. Revelation 1, 7. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. This coming there is no possibility of counterfeiting. It will be universally known, witnessed by the whole world. Great Controversy, page 625. Number 38b. Who only will be shielded from this powerful delusion that takes the whole world captive? Only those who have been diligent students of the scriptures and who have received the love of the truth will be shielded from the powerful delusion that takes the world captive. The Great Controversy, page 625. 38c. What is Satan seeking to do so we won't be prepared for the final crisis? Satan will, if possible, prevent them from attaining a preparation to stand in that day. He will so arrange affairs as to hedge up their way, entangle them with earthly treasures, cause them to carry a heavy, wearisome burden, that their hearts may be overcharged with the cares of this life, and the day of trial may come upon them as a thief. The Great Controversy, page 625. Number 39. Note. 
The death decree will give anyone the legal right to kill those who are loyal to God upon a certain date. What do the people of God do as the time for the death decree to go into effect draws near? As the decree issued by the various rulers of Christendom against commandment keepers shall withdraw their protection of government and abandon them to those who desire their destruction, the people of God will flee from the cities and villages and associate together in companies, dwelling in the most desolate and solitary places, the munitions of rocks. Isaiah 33:16. The Great Controversy, page 626. Number 40. Will all of God's people find refuge in the mountains? Where will the rest of God's people be? But many of all nations and of all classes, high and low, rich and poor, black and white, will be cast into the most unjust and cruel bondage. The beloved of God pass weary days, bound in chains, shut in by prison bars, sentenced to be slain, some apparently left to die of starvation in dark and loathsome dungeons. No human ear is open to hear their moans. No human hand is ready to lend them help. The Great Controversy, page 626. Will the Lord forget his people in this trying hour? Did he forget faithful Noah when judgments were visited upon the antediluvian world? Did he forget Lot when the fire came down from heaven to consume the cities of the plain? Did he forget the three worthies in the fiery furnace? Or Daniel in the den of lions? The Great Controversy, page 626. Number 41a. Who will visit God's loyal people in prison? Though enemies may thrust them into prison, yet dungeon walls cannot cut off the communication between their souls and Christ. One who sees their every weakness, who is acquainted with every trial, is above all earthly powers and angels will come to them in lonely cells, bringing light and peace from heaven. The Great Controversy, page 627. Number 41b. What will God finally do to those who are seeking to oppress and destroy his people? God's judgments will be visited upon those who are seeking to oppress and destroy his people. The Lord is merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, Yet he will, by no means, clear the guilty. The Great Controversy, page 627. The Close of Probation, The Seven Last Plagues. Number 42. What are the first three types of punishment God pours out on those who seek to oppress and destroy his children? When Christ ceases his intercession in the sanctuary, the unmingled wrath threatened against those who worship the beast in his image and receive his mark, Revelation 14, 9 and 10, will be poured out, says the revelator in describing those terrific scourges. 1. There fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. 2. The sea became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And 3. The rivers and fountains of waters became blood. The Great Controversy, page 627. Number 43. What is the fourth punishment God pours out on those who seek to oppress and destroy his children? In the plague that follows, power is given to the sun to scorch men with fire and men were scorched with great heat. The prophets thus describe the condition of the earth at this fearful time. The land mourneth, because the harvest of the field is perished. All the trees of the field are withered, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. The rivers of water are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Joel 1, 10-12, and 17-20, Amos 8-3. The Great Controversy, page 628. All the judgments upon men prior to the close of probation have been mingled with mercy. The pleading blood of Christ has shielded the sinner from receiving the full measure of his guilt. But in the final judgment, wrath is poured out unmixed with mercy. The Great Controversy, page 628. Number 44. When God pours these plagues out, what will the rebellious people desire? In that day, multitudes will desire the shelter of God's mercy, which they have so long despised. Amos 8, 11, and 12. 
The Great Controversy, page 629. Number 45. While the wicked are dying from hunger and disease, what will the angels of God do for the righteous? The people of God will not be free from suffering, but while persecuted and distressed, while they endure privation and suffer for want of food, they will not be left to perish. That God who cared for Elijah will not pass by one of his self-sacrificing children. Angels will shield the righteous and supply their wants. To him that walketh righteously is a promise. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Isaiah 33, 15 and 16. 41, 17, The Great Controversy, page 629. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Psalm chapter 121, verse 5 to verse 7, chapter 91, 3 to 10. The Great Controversy, page 629. Number 46. What do the people of God fear at this time? What do they do day and night? Yet to human sight it will appear that the people of God must soon seal their testimony with their blood as did the martyrs before them. Their countenances express their internal struggle. Paleness sits upon every face, yet they cease not their earnest intercession. The Great Controversy, page 630. Number 47a. What does God surround his people with at this time? Could men see with heavenly vision, they would behold companies of angels that excel in strength, stationed about those who have kept the word of Christ's patience. The Great Controversy, page 630. Number 47b. What does it mean to be baptized with the baptism? It was an hour of terrible, fearful agony to the saints. They cried day and night unto God for deliverance. To outward appearance there was no possibility of their escape. But they must wait a little longer and drink of the cup and be baptized with the baptism. Spiritual Gifts, Volume 1, page 202. Number 48. What happens when some people attack God's children before the law permits them to do so? Who are the army soldiers who fight then for God's children? Though a general decree has fixed the time when commandment keepers may be put to death, their enemies will in some cases anticipate the decree, and before the time specified will endeavor to take their lives. But none can pass the mighty guardians stationed about every faithful soul. Some are assailed in their flight from the cities and villages, but the swords raised against them break and fall powerless as a straw. Others are defended by angels in the form of men of war. The Great Controversy, page 631. Number 49. What do God's loyal people hear him say at this time? The words fall upon the ear, Stand fast to your allegiance, help is coming. Christ, the almighty victor, holds out to his weary soldiers a crown of immortal glory, and his voice comes from the gates ajar. Lo, I am with you, be not afraid. I am acquainted with all your sorrows. I have borne your griefs. You are not warring against untried enemies. I have fought the battle in your behalf, and in my name you are more than conquerors. The Great Controversy, page 632. Number 50, A. When the plagues begin falling, by what two means do God's people fear death? The eye of God, looking down the ages, was fixed upon the crisis which his people are to meet when earthly powers shall be arrayed against them. Like the captive exile, they will be in fear of death by starvation or by violence. The Great Controversy, page 634. Number 50. B. 
when the plagues begin falling, how many of God's people will die or be killed at this time? If the righteous were now left to fall a prey to their enemies, it would be a triumph for the prince of darkness. Says the psalmist, In the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Psalm 27, 5 Glorious will be the deliverance of those who have patiently waited for his coming, and whose names are written in the book of life. The Great Controversy, page 634. Number 51. What happens when the actual date of the death decree draws near? When the protection of human laws shall be withdrawn from those who honor the law of God, there will be, in different lands, a simultaneous movement for their destruction. As the time appointed in the decree draws near, the people will conspire to root out the hated sect. It will be determined to strike in one night a decisive blow which shall utterly silence the voice of dissent and reproof. The Great Controversy, page 635. Number 52. When will Jesus deliver his people? The people of God, some in prison cells, some hidden in solitary retreats in the forest and in the mountains, still plead for divine protection. While in every quarter, companies of armed men urged on by hosts of evil angels are preparing for the work of death. It is now in the hour of utmost extremity that the God of Israel will interpose for the deliverance of his chosen. The Great Controversy, page 635. Number 53. How will Jesus deliver his people? What will happen when companies of armed men attack God's loyal people? With shouts of triumph, jeering and imprecation, throngs of evil men are about to rush upon their prey, when, lo, a dense blackness, deeper than the darkness of the night, falls upon the earth. Then a rainbow, shining with the glory from the throne of God, spans the heavens and seems to encircle each praying company. The angry multitudes are suddenly arrested. Their mocking cries die away. With fearful forebodings, they gaze upon the symbol of God's covenant and long to be shielded from its overpowering brightness. The Great Controversy, page 635. Number 54. What do God's people hear God say at this time? By the people of God, a voice clear and melodious is heard, saying, Look up! And lifting their eyes to the heavens, they behold the bow of promise. They look up steadfastly into heaven and see the glory of God and the Son of Man seated upon his throne. In his divine form they discern the marks of his humiliation, and from his lips they hear the request presented before his Father and the holy angels. I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. John 17:24. Again a voice, musical and triumphant, is heard, saying, They come, they come, holy, harmless, and undefiled. They have kept the word of my patience. They shall walk among the angels. And the pale, quivering lips of those who have held fast their faith utter a shout of victory. The Great Controversy, page 636.